Um, anybody that the whole MTV world is skewed towards pop and young people and all that. And then they went and all these other channels, they farmed out and just threw the MTV logo on to try to get some connection to that old world. Somebody also told me they own a streaming platform. There's a free TV service app called Pluto. And apparently Viacom owns that. And they are putting a lot of old content on demand on this app. Now, I have no idea if they'll ever do anything with the old episodes of that metal show. They own them. I'm asked about those often as well. I have no control over it whatsoever. It would be nice if they were available for people to just see who've heard about the show and maybe you know couldn't watch it when it was on and it was live or active at the time. But that's on them because they would also have to do some some little bit of editing here and there if they were decided to repurpose it. But I have been told by people that they are starting to put some archival content and different things on this service. Because if you notice, everybody in the world has got an app now in terms of broadcast outlets, meaning CBS and Fox and whoever, most of them, there's some fee attached. This particular app there isn't the whole point about it is it's free but i don't know what their long-term goals are with it and should any of the stuff i've i mean hell before that metal show i've got six years of interviews and live performances i did in studios at vh1 classic i would just love for people to be able to see but i again that's all their world i have no idea what they're doing there all right uh we got to do that top of the hour Coming back with former Tess. Time to grab some calls here in the first hour. Uh, Lauren is working with me once again. The, the Sirius XM volume staff is scattered about just getting up to speed on that. Um, it's just a little bit of a hodgepodge here as everything sort of gets settled and figured out. For me, it's business as usual, being that, as I said, I've worked remotely for, for a long time now. But the some of the support staff is also scattered around. We're going to talk to Tommy Skio and Bite. That's the name of the band. And they've got a brand new song that's really good. So I'm glad to see him making music and introducing a new band. Needless to say, with all we just talked about, very tough time to introduce anything new at this point. I mean, that's the problem even with releasing music. You, you Sure, you, bands want to, can put out music or put out records, but everything is being so consumed in terms of people's focus on what's happening in the world that I think a lot of things are falling between the cracks. And I think in a lot of ways, people are just checked out to anything but their concern over what's happening. But we'll try to create some diversions here, at least for a couple hours a day, if you're a rock fan and do what we do. Tommy will join me live at the top of the hour at 3 Eastern, noon Pacific. We'll see how this new band came together, and we'll get some thoughts from him about all kinds of stuff. And uh, he's been on the show in the past since he left Tesla, but it's been a little while. And it'll be great to hear about this new band. And I'll play you. It's probably a little more than that. Uh, maybe they think it's all cleared up by early April. I don't know. Here's the funny thing, and I'm not going to name names, but there are a lot of bands, <laughs> national bands that tour, that do not draw or sell more than 200 tickets. Most of them, by, by the way. <laughs> I know because I hear about it from the promoters all the time. So conceivably, if the venues are open, there's a good amount of bands that could be touring right now because they draw about 150 to 200. They'd still be under the cap. Again, you just gotta, you gotta just, I'm trying to bring a little levity because it's been so friggin' doom and gloom, man. But uh, we'll get through it. I'm 